Hello there all, my name is Kate and welcome, welcome to this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing, click the button, click the notification button so you don't miss the new content and put the like. So today it is a very exciting day, we're going to take a Mediterranean cruise. We're going to visit 10 cities within just one video, this is going to be a long video. I'm going to tell you everything about the experience of traveling on a cruise liner Norwegian getaway. And we'll visit Rome, Cannes, Florence, Naples, Messina, Dubrovnik, Corfu, Santorini, Meteor, Mykonos, and finally Athens. So we're starting our journey in Rome. We arrived to Rome three days before the departure to just to see Rome. We're not very lucky with the weather, but well, it is what it is. So the city on seven hills and the ruler of the whole earth as the ancient point called Rome. Rome is the capital of Italy, the eternal city, one of the oldest cities in the world, the ancient capital of Roman Empire, one of those cities that probably everyone should try to visit at least once. Rome is located in the west central part of Italian boot, the birthplace of Latin language, which was widely used in antiquity and today is preserved in medicine, for example. The legislation of Roman Empire served as the basis of creation of modern Western law, so something to be grateful for to Romans. Today Rome is one of the most visited cities, undoubtedly due to the huge number of historical and architectural monuments of different eras, it's a real open-air museum, most of the things you find in the city are part of the UNESCO World Heritage List. And it would be a folly not to mention the wonderful Italian pizza, would definitely recommend trying one of the best Italian pizzas are in Rome or Naples for that matter, but Rome presents you with pretty decent options as well. So Rome brought us a huge grandeur of palaces, cathedrals, charm of Baroque fountains, power of the medieval castles. Here you'll probably find some of the best museums and art galleries in the world. And a little bit about the history of Rome. According to the legend, Rome was founded on April 21st, 753 BC by Romulus, one of the royal twins that were fed by the wolf and named Rome in honor of another twin, Bramus. The rise of Rome began in antiquity during the royal period. According to tradition, there were seven kings and Romulus was the first. At this time, first temples and servile wall were built. After the royal period, Rome became a republic and then began the significant expansion of the Rome state, strengthening its powers, Roads were laid, magnificent temples and palaces were built, culture, crafts and architecture were developed and the Roman Republic became very powerful. And as they say, the rest is history. Rome became one of the most powerful empires of the ancient world and its collapse led to the medieval times or the dark ages as we call them. Not so dark actually if you look into the history, but not today. And now to the exciting part of the journey, we're getting on a cruise ship. So we're getting on Norwegian Getaway, that's the ship of the Norwegian Cruise Line. The company is based in the US. And the ship was built in Germany in 2014. At the time of its baptism, so to say, it was the ninth largest cruise ship in the world with passenger capacity almost 4,000 people and the crew of over 1,500 amenities aboard of the ship include a variety of restaurants, several entertainment centers, outdoor pools, jacuzzis, open air movie theaters and countless bars. The next morning we were already in Cannes, I started it with a quiet breakfast and then took a small boat to arrive to the port of city of Cannes. Truly stunning place, a legendary French resort city known mainly due to the famous Cannes Film Festival that takes place here every year. Being one of the most luxurious resorts in French Riviera, Cannes boasts magnificent landscapes, waters of Mediterranean Sea, outlines of mountain ranges and famous avenues of stars, beautiful promenade, marina with snow white yachts and luxurious mansions. gastronomic delights, great market with cheeses, olives, sweets, for every taste, even seagulls don't mind a visit. 
In addition, Cairns has a rich history. Founded in 42 BC by Romans, the fishing village remained a quiet town almost throughout most of its history. However, in the middle of 19th century, it began to turn into an aristocratic resort center, where people of all stripes, including European aristocrats, subsequently reached out to. Cairns did not lose its gloss and cachet even in 20th century, becoming a home not only to the famous fil film festival already mentioned, but also numerous cultural and social-political events. The city is beautiful, very well located, very close to the port. I even managed to go back for lunch and then visit the city twice. In the evening we enjoyed a great show with dinner, both included, and finished a night in the bar. So it was a good night. And before we knew it, we were already in Florence. Florence, the capital of the Renaissance, the pride of Italy, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's located in the spacious valley of Arno River in the north of the country and is an administrative center of historical region of Tuscany. From the north to east, there are Apennine Mountains that approach Florence. The mountains and the Grail Hills surrounding the city perfectly set off the beauty and really emphasize the beauty of the Florentine churches, luxurious palaces, making the landscapes absolutely incredible. Nowhere else on the planet you will find such an abundance of masterpieces of architecture, sculpture, painting, predominantly of the Renaissance era. Here in Florence, Dante and Machiavelli wrote their immortal works, Raphael and Leonardo da Vinci honed their artistic skills, and Michelangelo and Donatello breathed life into the marble, creating some of the masterpieces of sculpture. Florence has managed perfectly to preserve its historical appearance. To feel the charm of the city, do not limit yourself to visiting museums and art galleries and churches. Actually take your time and really walk through the old streets of the city, experience the atmosphere, breathe in the city. Experience the medieval ages in a quiet walk. Sit in Trattoria, try a panini, a very simple but tasty bread, have a coffee and a pastry somewhere, watch people, especially Italian women, they're fascinating. Just, yeah, just experience the life of the city. And after a couple of hours of drive, we were in Pisa. Pisa obviously is a very famous city in the northern part of central Italy. It is also an administrative center of the province of the same name. An unofficial symbol of the city obviously is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Since 1986, the tower itself, the square, the cathedral and the baptistry took a status of UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is believed that the city was founded by Greeks. Then it became Etruscan city and in 193 BC came under the rule of the ancient Roman Empire. Thanks to the significant port of Pisa in the 11th century, it became the first maritime trading powers in the Mediterranean. Success in many wars, participation in the Crusades brought wealth and extensive possessions to the Maritime Republic. Trade and crafts have flourished here, citizens ruled a republic public under the protection of the emperor. In 1284, Pisan fleet unfortunately suffered a crushing defeat from Genoa and the port of Pisa was blocked. The city lost most of its possessions, wealth, trade, relations, influence and power. After numerous internal struggles, Pisa was easily taken over by Florence in 1406. On the next day, we arrived to Naples. I've been to Naples before and frankly it didn't impress me very much. That's why I have decided to visit Sorrento. It's very close, it's about an hour drive from the port. Sorrento is a magnificent Italian resort, one of the favorite vacation spots for many Italians and international tourists. The city has its own special energy and that's what people are coming for. Dickens and Goethe used to rest here. The stunning landscapes of Sorrento are depicted in the paintings of Russian painter Shadrin. Unique nature, warm sea, clean air, Italian cuisine, Italian hospitality, Italian language, which is music for the ears, and wine. Very developed infrastructure. That's just a short list of advantages that resort has to offer. The city has been a favorite vacation spot already with the aristocracy since the ancient times. 
and the evidence to it are the luxurious villas that were built here centuries ago. Greeks named the city Syrian, which means land of the sirens. Perhaps it was Sorrenta that Homer described in the poem The Odyssey, steep rocks on which sailors crashed, having heard the singing of the sirens. Later the city went to under the Roman rule. Sorrenta passed into the powers of different people from Goths to Byzantines to Turks and in 1860 the city was annexed to Italy and became part of Naples. In the evening we had a really good Indian cuisine and then watched a terrific musical and finished it up with a rock concert in a local pub. Here I have to say that entertainment is truly great. It's definitely a great deal to get all in one package, the accommodation, the transportation, the entertainment, the food. I would say it's a great deal, at least in my experience, given how expensive all of this would be if I were to purchase it separately. So in that sense, cruise actually actually offers a great advantage to travelers. So we are in Messina. To be precise, we're actually in Sicily and going to visit the province of Messina. It's located in the largest island of Italy and Mediterranean, Sicily. Three capes give the island a triangular shape, which is why ancient Greeks called it Trinacria. The coast of Sicily is washed by three seas, Ionian, Mediterranean and Tyrrhenian. The most authentic, beautiful, amazing destinations in Europe, place of rich history, traditions with very picturesque nature and very special way of life. Located at the crossroads of Mediterranean trade routes, Sicily has always been one of the most strategically important places. In ancient times, the island was known as the part of Greater Greece and was mentioned, for example, by Cicero describing Syracuse as one of the largest and richest cities of ancient Greece and Syracuse was in Sicily. Sicily is one of the greatest holiday destinations with wonderful southern Italian flair, but what is more important maybe for some is the association with the legendary godfather. But seriously, well, who hasn't watched the iconic Francisco Pola trilogy, right? Well, I haven't. I haven't seen it. I actually watched it only after I visited the island, but I didn't regret visiting it. So if you've seen The Godfather, if you haven't, I would recommend watching it. It's a great movie. Episodes of the film were filmed in the two neighboring villages, Forza de Agro and Savolka. They're very, very picturesque Sicilian villages that completely charmed me, stole my heart, and I actually really want to return here. So in Sicilian village Savoca that we're seeing right now, the wedding of Michael Carleona took place here. Michael Carleona's first wife lived in Savoca. She was the daughter of the local businessman who owned a bar. So the wedding took place here. The village actually received a decent amount of money after the shooting of the movie and the fathers, the, the city fathers, so to say, spent the money on recreating the beauty of the city and they certainly have done a very good job. The movie was released in 1972 and immediately became a hit. Godfather Trilogy received many Oscars and many great actors starred here, Marlon Brando, Al Pacino and John Cazale, which was super interesting was when we were hearing the guy telling us, talking to people who worked with actual actors, who were sharing their personal account on what kind of people these actors really were. So they were pointing out that both Marlon Brando and John Cazale were super fun and were always engaging in parties and talking to people more or less very approachable, but Al Pacino was very quiet, very shy, hardly ever spoke to anyone. That was quite interesting to say the least. In the evening we returned to the boat, had a great dinner, always in cake, a drink, went to our favorite pub, listened to our favorite band. To be fair, it was one of the most eventful, one of the most wonderful holidays I've ever had in my entire life because we were so eventful, so well organized and I didn't have to do anything. And now we're in Dubrovnik, one of my personal favorites. Dubrovnik, historically known as Ragusa, is a city of Adriatic Sea in Dalmatia region, southern Croatia, one of the most famous tourist destinations here in the Mediterranean. Dubrovnik is the heritage of the world architecture included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Oftentimes referred as a pearl of Adriatic, the most beautiful city in the Croatian coast. It was founded in the first half of 7th century, interestingly enough, by a group of refugees from Epidaurus and named Laos. 
Soon the settlement merged with the neighboring Slavic town of Dubrava, becoming the city and then the center of the powerful Republic of Dubrovnik. For a long time it was under the protection of the Byzantine Empire and then under the sovereignty of the Venetian Republic. Between the 14th and 19th century Dubrovnik ruled as a free state. The prosperity of the city was historically based on maritime trade, being a capital of maritime Republic of Ragusa, it reached the highest level of its development in roughly 15th and 16th century became known for its wealth and extremely skillful diplomacy a lot of interesting stories about that many buildings in the old part of the city tell the glorious past unique venetian architectural style you can see buildings from 14th to 18th century gorgeous houses with galleries narrow cobbled streets squares with fountains and statues the place is absolutely stunning the most monumental site of dubrovnik is the city wall this is a defensive structure that surrounds the old city along the perimeter. On average, the height is about 6 meters. It's a circular route of 2 kilometers. From here, you have an amazing view over the city and the West Harbor Pier. If any fans of Games of Thrones are here, if you guys hear me, this is the place for you. Most A lot of episodes were shot here. This was so-called the capital. Dubrovnik is now almost like a pilgrimage for the fans of the Game of Thrones. And now we're going down the pedestrian street of Stradum. The street crosses the city and here you will see most of the sites. Well, first of all, the oldest structure in the entire coast of Adriatic Sea is the Great Fountain of Onofria. In Dubrovnik, it was traditional to conserve the water from the rains. However, the mountain springs were found a few kilometers away from the place and then they channeled the water to the city and provided the city with the running water, hence the fountains. This fountain appeared here in 1444. Sponza Palace, one of the architectural monuments of Dubrovnik. The palace was built here under the leadership of Pasko Miltsevich. In 1521, the building was made in the Gothic style with elements of early Renaissance. Initially, it was assumed to be a residence for a prince. During the Republican times, the building was used for all sorts of purposes, from treasury to customs to school to coin yard to bank. There was even an academy of consonants um, that held scientific and literary discussion in the Sponza Palace. The Sponza Palace today houses the city museum. Here you could also see the Prince Palace or Prince Court that's located um, on the square that is on the right from the street that we are walking on and the construction dates to 15th century. In the design, there are elements of early Renaissance and Gothic style. And if you still have the time, walk outside of the city, try to go to the nearby hill somewhere to see the city from above. It's definitely worth the while. Be sure to make it to the cruise liner in time. There are plenty of funny videos online of people running up to the cruise ship, but it is too late. In the evening, we had wonderful Asian noodles and dumplings. It was absolutely great. And then again, went to the same pub to enjoy the music of the same band. The next morning, we had a very luxurious sort of American style breakfast with loads of tasty thingies. I really miss US, I used to live in the US, so having a very much an American service and American culture and American atmosphere on board of the ship to me personally was a huge advantage, so I had an American holiday with European ports, which again to me was the best of both worlds. And we have arrived to the island of Corfo, our Greek name Kyrkira. It belongs to the group of Greek islands located in Ionian Sea. Ancient Greek myths tell a wonderful story of the island's creation. 
apparently was founded by the god of seas Poseidon. Having fallen in love with one of the daughters of the rivers, he kidnapped the beauty and settled her on the island that was as beautiful as she was. In honor of his beloved, Poseidon named the island Kirkira, and since then the place has been glorified more than once in more than one legend. Homer sang it in his poems and Odysseus stopped here on the way to Ithaca. The geographical position of the island has long determined its military, strategic and commercial importance, which turned Kirkira into the arena of very turbulent historical events and military clashes. In the 8th century BC, Kirkira became a Corinthian colony and became an important center of trade. However, inhabitants of the island rebelled against the conquerors, united with Athens, concluding a military alliance with the great city. After the collapse of Roman Empire in 395, the island remained the part of the Eastern Roman Empire, which later became the Byzantine Empire. It was during the Byzantine period the island became called Corypho, the Greek for city of mountains, and later in the Latin name arose as Corfo, which it has today. Some of the main delights of the place are kumquats. Kumquats are these wonderful fruits that you can enjoy here in fresh form or in form of liquor or candies or desserts. It's really, really tasty. So then I returned to the boat, had a wonderful evening as always, and then a very relaxing breakfast with the view over the water. Breakfasts were amazing. There were three or four restaurants available. You could have breakfast in different restaurants. In that sense, again, that's one of the best holidays because we didn't have to organize anything. We didn't have to check in and check out of the hotels or think of where to eat and what to do. Everything was organized. And again, that's one of the reasons I love the holidays. Santorini, also known as Tira, is a very picturesque island in Greece, in the Aegean Sea, known as one of the most stunning places in Europe and a true Greek paradise. According to the legend, the five islands of the archipelago are remnants of the former greatness of Atlantis, which has gone underwater. Santorini consists of five islands, and the largest of them is Fira or Tira, which we're visiting today. Santorini has incredible sunsets and sunrises, snow white buildings, blue domed churches, and windmills, excellent gastronomy, don't get me started, and stunning beaches. Santorini is a true gem of Greece with fantastic volcanic landscapes, steep cliffs, and crystal clear waters. But the most amazing thing of the place is obviously the coastal villages, very comfortably nestling on the edges of the cliffs with breathtaking views over the Aegean Sea. Santorini is a symphony of three colors, blue, white, and shades of yellow. According to Greek traditions, white symbolizes faith and justice, blue the sky, and this yellow brown the power of nature and the power of volcanoes. The shape of the archipelago is very unusual and explained by a tragedy. It's a result of the eruption of a very large volcano. After erupting, it exploded, leaving behind just five islands. And yet another of the gorgeous Greek islands, Mykonos. We're still in the Aegean. Mykonos is known for its magnificent beaches and one of the most popular Greek islands, one of the most prestigious resorts in Europe, combining luxury with tradition and history. From here you can easily visit another island, very famous island, Delos is a unique place, an incredibly rich archaeological site with a huge number of artifacts from different cultures over several millennia. In the 5th century BC, Athenians organized what they called themselves purification on the island. It was forbidden to bury the dead. Later also it was forbidden to give birth in Dallas. After the last purification, every five years a magnificent ceremony was held in honor of Apollo. Delos is one of the most important mythological, historical, and archaeological sites here in Greece. Excavations of the island are the most extensive in the Mediterranean. Delos was sacred sanctuary for millennium before Olympian Greek mythology made it the birthplace of Apollo and Artemis. 
Mother of the children, Leta, was seduced by Zeus. I mean, who wasn't? <laughs> um, God seduced other goddesses, nymphs, and mere mortals. And when Hera, the, Zeus's wife, found out about her pregnancy, she obviously wasn't very pleased. She expelled Leta from all of the places on Earth, so she had no place to give birth. In. The only place Leda found refuge was Dallas, and Dallas was not considered part of the Earth, apparently, because it was discovered by Poseidon, brother of Zeus, to help him and his beloved. Hence Dallas. Dallas, in translation, is open or found. Mykonos is known as a very cosmopolitan island, and considered one of the great traveling Meccas. This is uh, this is one of the most frequently visited islands in the Aegean Sea. Beautiful nature, again terrific gastronomy, a lot to do, a lot to see. Once again, a symphony of three colors, predominantly white, blue, and shades of yellow. Beautiful windmills. Windmills appeared in Mykonos for the first time in 16th century, roughly, and were continuously building in 20th century. As of today, there are 16 mills left, and they're truly adding the beauty to the island. I'm not sure if I pointed out we were traveling in November, so it was a little chilly, but was definitely perfect weather for a hot jacuzzi up on the highest deck of the ship with drinks served <laughs> to the jacuzzi pretty much it was a great relaxing evening then we had uh, had some drinks at the local bar and uh, seafood buffet i i am a vegetarian but occasionally i do indulge <laughs> especially when there are no good vegetarian options and the only good ones are seafood ones so it was good and our final port before arriving to Athens is Meteor. Greece is the world center of Orthodox monasticism, and Meteor is a complex of monasteries located on the tops of massive stone pillars, absolutely stunning. The mountains of Thessaly in Greece and the whole area called Meteora, which is translated as floating in the air. Six active mountain monasteries can be found here. The first mention of hermits in the mountain caves and their places of worship dates back to 10th century. And since 1988, it has been included in UNESCO World Heritage. The monasteries of Meteora attract with their rich history, original architecture, stunning views, a truly unique, <laughs> a truly unique experience. At the end of 10th century, the first hermits appeared in the Greek rocks of the mountains of Thessaly. At the altitude of 600 meters, they found peace, established life, and equipped special platforms for prayers. Over the years, hermits who lived uh, here isolatedly formed communities uh, and with monastic way of life that later grew into monasteries. Six monasteries of Meteora, two of which are female, the rest are male. All of them can be visited, but it is strictly within the timeline that is allowed for visit them. There are certain months and certain dates uh, in which you could visit them. We visited two monasteries, Monastery of Saint Stefan, a female monastery founded in the middle of 15th century, and also Monastery of Varlaam, a male monastery, was founded in 14th century by the hermit Varlaam who built a modest church in several cells and lived here his whole life by himself. And in 1518, two brothers, Fiofan and Nectari, took on restoration of these buildings and gradually other monks joined them, creating a monastery. Then we have had some of the local delights with red wine. Returning to the boat, it was our final night on the boat and the fanciest dinner yet. Again, the food was fantastic, and it's worth pointing out that altogether it turned out to be a bargain, I think, personally. So it's totally worth it. I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, the final night was very busy, loads and lots of entertainment. We went to our favorite pub, 
Then we went to the final concert where most of the artists were performing together. And there it was, the now the memories, the memories of the great holidays. We packed, we were ready to leave for our final port, which was Athens. And we are in Athens. Athens is the capital of Greece, the center of district Attica which received the name and honor of Greek goddess Athena. Athens is economic, financial and cultural center of the country, unquestionably a cradle of Western civilization, Western culture, birthplace of democracy, for that alone the place is worth visiting. The first settlement appeared here as early as 3000 BC. The golden age of Athens fell on the 6th and the 4th century BC, when Plato and Aristotle worked and lived here. The city remained important until the rise of Constantinople and Byzantium. After the fall of Byzantine Empire, Athens fell under the control of Ottomans. In the 19th century, Athens became the capital of independent Greece and a group of architects was assembled to build a new city around the classical ruins to allow for both a dynamic capital with preservation of classical ruins, which I think was done successfully. The city has the largest collection of Greek ruins and artifacts. It's a time machine that will take you back to a couple of millennia. But at the same time, it will provide you a wonderful place for holidays with noisy taverns, great food, laughter, a lot of shopping and excitement on the streets. You definitely want to visit Acropolis, the sacred hill around which the capital has grown. Acropolis is visible from almost any part of the city. It's the best to go to Acropolis along the street of Dionysus, Areopagid. And there you will see the ancient theater of Dionysus. It was here where some of the most celebrated Greek playwrights watched premieres of their plays. And that, my dear friends, would be all that I wanted to share with you about my cruise experience. It was absolutely terrific. We'd highly, highly recommend it. If you've been on a cruise or planning to go to one, please do share your experience in the comments down below. Thank you so much for staying with me until the end. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to put the like and see you soon.